Hi everyone, in this video I want to introduce some steps and also cal calculation method in order to determine our capacitance. For example, our problem is that we are provided with an unknown capacitor in which we don't know what is the capacitance of the capacitor. So we need to do some experimental setup in order to gain some information and then based on some theoretical calculation formula, we can derive our unknown capacitance approximately since we can not accurately determine what is the real value of our unknown capacitor. But at least it will give us the good, somehow good feeling, good value about the capacitance of our unknown capacitor. So this is the experimental set up we would need to have a AC voltage source or a AC current source it depends but I prefer maybe to use an AC voltage source it's more straightforward from my point of view and then we connect that voltage source but it should be AC since in DC our capacitor is an open so we cannot determine our capacitance when the source is DC. We need a AC voltage source. So we have an AC voltage source connected to our capacitor. And then we will set up the AC current meter in series between our voltage source and the capacitor in order to record or in order to measure the current going into our capacitor. On the other hand, we also need a AC voltage meter connected in parallel with our AC voltage source in order to we determine or take control of what we are generating in our source. So with this setup and with the information from the AC voltage meter and the AC current meter combined with some calculation method we can derive our capacitance of the unknown capacitor. And there are two calculation methods. One calculation method in time domain and the other will be in frequency domain. In my preference, I prefer in frequency domain since it's more straightforward. However, I will introduce both methods in this series. So for the first part, I will introduce the calculation in time domain and in the second part, I will introduce the calculation in frequency domain. Uh, but one more um, side information. Uh, with this setup, we will need maybe some three independent or maybe even four independent instruments. One is used at an AC voltage source, one instrument to measure the current meter, one instrument for the voltage meter, and maybe another one instrument in order to have a record of our voltage meter and also record of our current meter. So it requires a lot of independent measurement instruments. However, there is one laboratory instrument which combines everything, the AC voltage source, the current meter, the voltage meter, and also the recording unit for the measured voltage and current which is the source measure unit. You can search in Google, you can search in YouTube to know more about this instrument, but it's quite convenient instrument for determining a value of component, a known value of component, and in our case, which is the capacitance of a known capacitor. So now let's go to the first calculation method. So with the experimental setup, we can measure our voltage on the capacitor and also the current go into the capacitor. And according to some theory, we know that the changing in the charge in our capacitor equal to the changing in the charge according to time is equal to the current going through the capacitor. Since is equal based on the def definition of the current. 
The definition of current is the amount of charges going through an area per unit of time. So this is the changing of the charging on the capacitor blade per unit of time. So that's why it's defined as the current going through a capacitor. On the other hand, we know that to calculate the charges accumulated on the capacitor blade, we have the charges on the capacitor equal to the capacitance times the voltage on the capacitor. In our case, of course, uh, the capacitance may be a parameter varies with time, but to simplify, we will assume that the capacitance in our case doesn't vary with time it's like a constant value so for example like we are provided with a capacitor then we will provide it with a constant capacitance but of course that constant capacitance cannot actually demonstrate the real capacitance of the capacitor but it gives us good evaluation of our capacitor so let's assume that the capacitance of the capacitor is constant so if we take the derivative of the charges with time, our capacitance stay constant. We only do the derivation of the voltage according to time. Since we are applying an AC voltage source, of course we can totally do the derivation of our AC voltage. And then we will have the current of the capacitor. And doing some mathematical manipulation we will obtain this function which is we will put the small infinite term on the other hand and then we integrate that current with term from a term point A to a term point B and we will me we also measure the changing in the voltage during that time duration from the time point A to the time point P. So when we do this integration, we have a value and we take that value divided by the changing in the voltage on the capacitor during the same duration, we will obtain our capacitance. Please remember this formula. We will use this formula in order to calculate our capacitance and in order to demonstrate the correctness of this method, I will use a device. So now I will change to a device and demonstrate the calculation. Okay, here's the a uh, device circuit simulation to check the correctness of the theory or knowing how to apply the theory to calculate when we are already given with the um, information of the voltage that we apply to the capacitors and also the current going through the capacitance. In case that you don't understand the parameter setup of the poles or the transient analysis in the circuit, please refer to my previous video about Edispice. In this video, we will only concentrate on how to use the calculation method to determine our capacitance. Of course, in order to um, check the theory, I will need to use a capacitance of 1 farad. In our case, we don't know that this capacitance is 1 farad, okay? We don't know that. But to do the simulation, we need to put a value. And also to check the calculation method, we also need to assume that there's a, there's a value. But when we are doing the calculation, we assume we don't know this value. And we only do derivation of this value based on the information of the voltage measured and also the current measured. Uh, just w small information, if I right click and I look at the period of this pulse signal, then the period is 0 0.02 second, so the pulse has the frequency of 50 Hz, okay? And the transient term, it means in the term simulation analysis, I would like to see 10 pulses. And then I will measure the current according to those generated pulses. Now let's run the simulation. Nothing happens since we have to measure. We have to measure. Now we move the mouse to measure. 
when we have a red probe, we can measure the voltage. We can see this is the pulses voltage that we generate, or let's say this is the information that we gain from our voltage meter. And now we'll add another plot to uh, measure our current going through the capacitance. I will add plot, uh, sorry, add plot here, choose the plot, and then go back to the schematic, press Alt key on the keyboard, ALT, Alt, and then move the mouse until we see such a symbol and we can measure the current. Here is our current. Okay. Now, to apply the calculation method, we will assume that, okay, we don't know the capacitance here is one farad. We only given with the information of the voltage we apply to the capacitor and also the current going through the capacitor. And uh, I put I already put the formula over here again, the very important formula that we need to apply to calculate our capacitance. And according to the formula, we need to see a time period where we can see the changing in our voltage applied. And if we're gonna choose, for example, this time duration, we don't see any changing in the voltage. It's a constant one. Or if we're gonna choose some duration over here, it's a constant zero. We cannot see that. The only transition in the voltage that we can see is somewhere on the edge when the voltage changes from zero to one. So this is where will be our interest in order to calculate the capacitance. Now let's zoom in this part. I would choose zoom in. Uh, that's bad. Sorry. I would need to uh, less Sort of it. Okay. Good. How can I zoom back? Uh, a minute, please. Okay. I zoom back with this zoom full extents. Now I wanna zoom in this part, right? I wanna zoom in this part very, very, very closely. This part. Okay, so here you can see there's a change in voltage during this duration and also we can see our current. Now let's measure our voltage since we need to have the uh, voltage changing magnitude in order to calculate our capacitance. So we add, sorry, right click, we add to cursor. We move the cursor 1 to here which is the start of the change and then when is the end of the change okay I believe this is the end of the change uh, and then we read the difference between the two cursor so the change in the voltage the delta VC will be 1 volt from the time point A equal to 19 millisecond to a time point B 20.01 millisecond and the duration that we can see here we can read from the horizontal which is 10.07 microsecond so that our voltage now we need to write down the delta V equal to 1 volt and the delta V for that duration is 10 0.07 microsecond and we need to also measure our current in the same duration in the same duration from 10.8 equal to 19 millisecond to 20 10 point B 20.01 millisecond uh, we just need to right click on the, sig the current signal and then we choose one cursor is enough so in that duration, in that duration, our current can somehow assume to be constant, even though there's a small part here where the current changing with time and it's not a constant value. But let's 
let's assume that is a constant. It, if the current is considered to be constant, constant in the same duration, then the value of the current will be 100 kilo amp. So our current will be 100 kilo amp. So uh, looking back in the formula, we need to do the integration of the current in this duration, in this time duration, right? And we already assume that our current is constant in this duration. So the integrate of a constant current during the time duration from time point A to time point B here will be equal to 100 kilo amp times the delta T duration which is 10.07 microsecond so the integration value will be integration value will be 1.017 and we take that value 1.017 divided the delta V during the same duration and when we already said before, which is 1 volt for the delta V, so 1.017 divided by 1 volt equal to 1 farad, approximately equal to 1 farad. And what do we have here? We have the capacitor set to be 1 farad. It means the theory calculation can be applied to derive our capacitance as long as we are given with the applied AC voltage to the capacitor and also given with the measure current going through our capacitor during the same measurement time or during the same measurement time window we can derive the capacitance of our capacitor. Okay, so that's the end of part one. And in the part two, I will introduce the way that we can calculate the capacitance in the frequency domain. Thank you for watching.